Um, it's very good to be here. And um, a huge thank you to, to Annie and, and at BUS for uh, this opportunity just to speak very briefly about Fight for Sight and also more generally about eye research, which I happen to think is the, the most grievously underfunded area of medical research in the UK and certainly one that has gone unnoticed and unacknowledged by, by great swathes of the, of the population in, in the UK and we, we really need to do uh, something about that. Um, as the representative here for, for, for Fight for Sight, the, the leading charity investing in eye research um, in the UK, um, I'm, I'm especially proud um, of the jointly funded small grant awards scheme that we launched back in uh, 2012. Um, it really does point to our commitment um, to collaboration and I'm, I'm especially proud um, uh, of our working relationship with, with Annie and, and Bus. Um, she is by far and away um, the leading partner charity in, in this and I believe we now got seven jointly funded small grant awards under our respective belts uh, which is great news and I'm sure there's more to more to come. Um, it's very much, I think, down to her passion and um, commitment to, to research and certainly her drive to create a better world for, for people with, with birdshot. So it, it's, it's wonderful to have uh, Annie alongside us. Um, I think there are, however, um, various challenges uh, with, with eye research or to eye research. Um, and, and one of them, of course, is that um, there are many people out there who are very confused um, about the support sector and about eye research. Uh, many people think that certain leading charities in the support sector actually invest in eye research, and we all know that isn't the case. I wish they would invest in eye research, but currently they're not. Um, we're also, I believe, the best kept secret um, in, in the UK. Um, I wander around the UK a great deal um, giving talks solo and joint and so many people are not familiar with Fight for Sight let alone about eye research. Um, they're not familiar um, with this amazing army of world-class researchers, present company very much included, um, who are operating um, upstream of clinics and hospitals and opticians um, who are on a daily basis trying to improve our understanding of the patterns and processes of, of disease. They're trying to improve treatments. They're trying to improve diagnosis and detection. Um, they're also, of course, trying to improve the identification and characterization of genes and also the rehabilitation of patients. And um, many of those things I've mentioned, I'm sure, will, will ring bells with you. Um, there's also this challenge that uh, people have a certain indifference uh, to sight tests, to the importance of um, detection and diagnosis. Um, many people are making uh, lifestyle choices which will impact on their sight eventually. But also there is this question of money. That's the big elephant in the room right now. And Fight for Sight, despite the fact we are the leading charity in the UK, investing in eye research, we can still only fund one in six grant uh, applications that come through the door. It's also very competitive out there. Um, when you look across at the members of the Association of Medical Research Charities, only 0.7% of the money invested every year goes into eyes. So, you know, we are competing with cancer, with mental illness, and so on. So, what are we going to do about all of that? Well, um, we do, I think, need to uh, work with the assets that we have, the UK-based research community, um, also uh, those experts in rehabilitation and patient care, and, of course, patients. Um, we need to get out there and talk about our research in a way that is enthusing, and informative um, and engaging and does encourage people to go back to their places of work and also their families and friends and talk about eye research in a way which I hope will eventually point them towards um, investing um, in eye research. Um, there is, of course, also um, the, the opportunity to, if you like, uh, improve the profile 
of eye research to, to give it an image that is recognizable, to speak about it in a language that is understandable, and, and give it a sort of context uh, that is uh, inspirational. Um, we need to engage with many more people out there and certainly explain uh, what birdshot is and how it is impacting on people's lives. Emails and phone calls are not going to do it. We need to be able to put a face um, to the eye research. So if there is anybody in the audience who's interested and confident enough to, to be a patient advocate, who'd like to come and share their experiences with audiences that I go and speak to, then please come and talk to me. If there are any researchers out here as well um, who'd like to join the network that I have launched uh, in the last year, then please do so. The network um, is now supported by some very eminent clinician scientists and uh, academic researchers and patients. Uh, and we're on the road talking up eye research. Um, I lost my sight five years ago to a retinal inherited disease. I still believe that I'm a patient. I live in hope that I will have my sight restored simply because of the amazing advances so far in the last 30, 40 years that eye research has delivered. And I would suggest to you, given the amazing uh, ongoing work in treatments and in the knowledge around birdshot and also um, uh, the work that's ongoing um, uh, in our research generally uh, to support birdshot, um, I would ask you to also keep believing. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs>